Good, art. good symbol, good good symbolism in it, and that's what I liked about it the most. Nice. And what about you, David? Well, I, uh, I I didn't go something so heartfelt, but uh, I I did choose Transformer Spotlight Cup. These are a series of one shots that have been going on for a while. Um, uh, Nick Roche is doing the writing and the the art chores on this title, mm -hmm. and uh, and he does a good job because it, it, it's in two mindsets, and then I'll get to what I'm talking about there in a second. But he changes his art style almost halfway through the book to a, to a cleaner style. Um, the reason why there's two art styles is because basically Cup is crash landed on a, a planet, um, and he, like his crew and the ship is is totally devastated and whatever, and they're dead. And, and but there's um, <clears throat> the 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 planet is full of uh, radioactive crystalline rocks. It's like the terrain of the planet instead mm -hmm. of plant life and and everything. There's just these giant radioactive rocks everywhere. And ultimately, this uh, it, it has poisoned Cup's mind and it, and and it basically will spark, if you will, in the Transformers lingo. They don't say brain or or mind. They say spark apparently. Um, it's basically poisoned him, and he's like hallucinating. He, you know, he thinks these rocks are singing to him, and he, he sees like these these uh, savage robots coming after him in the middle of the night, and he's fighting them off every night, and like he's going for years and years doing this apparently, mm -hmm. and uh, and what it what it has become. Halfway through the book, they they go to an, another group of Autobots that are are attempting to rescue Cup from the planet. And that's who's been coming to him every night, but since he's been hallucinating and freaking out, he thinks that these guys are here to attack him and, like, kill him. So he's been fighting them off and everything, because he's all, like, that's tripped out and he's poisoned. <laughs> and it's pretty cool the way they twisted the book around for you. Um, are they just strictly one-shots? Do they any other spotlights, yeah, all, like, all, no, twist up at all? Or no? I, don't, I don't think they've ever come together before. Okay, I, mean, I think there's one shots, uh, independent stories. So pretty stuff. much is the beginning and an end. It's none of this cliffhanger stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, that's it's, good. It's a, it's a solid story for you. That's a good one. That's a good one. You got some... Oh, God. What? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I seen you guys only had four books this week. I don't know how you could possibly pass up Walking Dead, number 37. Uh, we almost did, Bob. <laughs> so this is my pick of the week. All right, let me tell you what's going on. It's a, this is this is an outstanding book. Let me tell you. First of all, you got a marriage, and then you got a couple people getting it on. We got some revelations about uh, Rick's baby, hmm. and they're preparing for war with uh, the governor and the governor's folks. Cool. Right here, Walking Dead. Don't let so, it go by. So there's no action in this book, but the next one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't need Hulk Bash, okay? I need I need some good story. Right here is a good story. <laughs> right on. Right on. I actually wanted that as cover of the week, but uh, it was ruled out, and we can't do that. We can't do that one. No. no. See, this is truly the cover of the week, okay, guys? Cover of the week. Then you gotta check it out. But, I'm I'm out of here. Walking Dead 37. Sweet. Let's check out that cover of the week. In the ballads. Black Bolt. No, I'm not gonna do it again. Anyways, let's give you some Boom. next week's pick. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> next week's pick some good stuff, like always. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? I'm actually gonna take one of your picks, David. And I've been loving Miss Marvel. The past couple of issues of Miss Marvel issue, right? issue is tough, number 15 is coming out next week. Um, I can't get enough of uh, the initiative tie-ins right now. Some of them are very good, and Miss Marvel's one of those titles that I can't stop reading. So hopefully we f get some more answers of maybe the Mighty Avengers or just whatever, because I love her. No, they're just going to draw it out. You're not going to get any answers. I'm not going to tell you nothing. I can hope, David. That's going to give you some, some nice shots, maybe some crap talk, maybe a couple Duke Throne, pow pow. End of comic book. Boo. No, I like this one. Anyways... Marvel Zombies vs. Army of Darkness number three is coming out next week, and 
Number two kind of was a disappointment to me. But I uh, hope they can pull I, this out. Because I spoiled it for you. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I told you, remember? Ah, well, ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. you remember. Uh, Anyways, I read it and it still sucked. Did you? But I hope they turn it around. Because Ash shouldn't be going down that early in the series. Always got to recommend it. I love it. Very hilarious. Uh, it's one of those funny books that I just can't get my hands in, hands off. Battle Pope, issue number 14. Imagine that. Who, 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 is, who writes that? Kirkman. Doesn't uh, Chris Claremont right for Battle Pope? Does he? I know. I thought Kirkman does it. <laughs> oh, dude. Kirkman what? writes it, bro. So yeah, Kirkman. Kirkman writes everything. Oh, okay. He wrote my history book in high school. Did you know that? Woohoo! What's the name of it? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, Whatever, dude. I gotta check this one out. Since we're going with uh, the religion slamming comics this week, I'm going with Loaded Bible 2, Blood of Christ. That's a one shot. I just saw it on the list. I was like, hey, I gotta, I gotta see what that's about. So maybe you should too. You know? Check or out, not. Check out some Loaded Bible. Or not. Okay. At least it's only one shot. I might get to commit to a series or anything like that. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're gonna do something special for you today. For you, special. Let's mix it up a little bit. It's a new segment that's gonna familiarize you with co characters that you haven't been seeing too much of recently and bringing you into their new title that's about to be popping up. It is called Where Have You Been? Where Have You Been? And you wanna know who's on our say it. The Mighty Thor! The Mighty Do Thor, aka Donald Blake, the son of Odin. Come on, man. Everyone's been. Who, doesn't, who doesn't want this guy back, huh? He Everybody's is... all, who? A clone? Smash. Suck. And you even say it in the previews no clone. This is the real thing. This is the real deal. The real deal's back. You know, I was actually just briefing my history on Thor. Mm hmm. You know, what would you guess someone weighs at 6'6"? Six, 6'6"? Six? Six, six? If you were Thor or just a regular guy? Nah, if you were Thor. If you were Thor, 380 pounds. Try 640 pounds. Shut up. I Wikipedia that. Man. 640 pounds, that's a big cat He right must there. have a great bed frame. <laughs> he does not. No, ask, ask Guardian bed rails. I would understand maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand, maybe like a 7'6 guy, but no, nah, this guy's 6'6. Six, six. But anyways, he made his first appearance in Journey into the Mystery uh, number uh, 83. Number 83. Everyone knows Thor for his mighty hammer, the Molnar. Mighty Molnar. So pretty much, you know, you got the hammer, you got the Thor, and it's true. uh. It's true. For, so here, I'm gonna give you a brief history about what. what it's a little bit. A little what bit. happened to him, pretty much, uh, for years. Yes, is the the dual identity, um, Donald Blake and Thor. Pretty much, uh, his father, um, Odin, sent him down there because he wanted him to learn humility. Mm -hmm. All right. He wanted him to be the greatest god ever. I'm, I'm guessing. So he sends him down there. Blah blah blah. He runs into blah <laughs> blah. <laughs> he runs into Loki. Obviously, his his evil step brother hates him because Odin loves him. Mm. <laughs> Another tear. <laughs> about that pain you were talking about a while right. ago, huh? It's in Thor 2, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, you know, Loki tries to get Thor to fight the Hulk. Pivotal point in comics. Yeah. Thor, Hulk, Captain America, they all form the Avengers, well, pretty much. I don't know Captain America. Iron Man. Iron Man. There was Thor, Hulk, Iron Man, and... Giant I Man, or oh, Ant-Man and Wasp. Oh, what Giant Man back then? So, form the Avengers. So that's pretty much how the Avengers got together, David. I didn't know that. You didn't? Because I didn't read 12 cent comics back in the day. I just, I just was taught again. <laughs> so let's 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 get you a little fresh of what now is happening. Um, or not now, happened when like 2000, two thousand, two or. Yeah, well, when he when he died. Uh, yeah, pretty much. What was he, that? Two thousand four. Two thousand four, some somewhere around there, give or take a year or two. Three years is a long time to be away if you're a, a fan favorite. You correct, I mean? correct. But, you know, he died, for people that don't know, uh, the end of Asgard. He decided... He it was won. the Battle of Ragnarok, wasn't it? Right, yeah. Battle of Ragnarok. Bam! Bang. Boom! Quit! Again! <laughs> he decides he wants to destroy it because he's tired. He he finds out there's gods above him. Mm -hmm. And they're using them as little, little pawns in their own little game. He's trying to break that chain, and that's what he does. He 
of existence. No more Thor, no more Loki.